This five-year-old gorilla lost his mother and had been alone ever since. But when he met his new BFF, his shocking reaction will amaze you. Perry the gorilla was not the average primate in the Mefu primate sanctuary. He had his own struggles, his story. This is why the budding gorilla kept to himself, immune to the noise from his other animal companions as they frolicked and played in their spacious yet closely monitored enclosures outside. His eyes, once bright and curious, now darkened, dull and haunted by visions of the past. Another day was wearing on, yet nothing out of the ordinary had taken place. Perry still had solitude for company, with the distant animal sound serving as a nagging reminder of the wildlife thriving in the walls beyond his quarters. Days had passed since he was placed in this secluded corner of the sanctuary, and the gorilla was beginning to lose hope of ever reconnecting with his kind, or other animals for that matter. But unbeknownst to Perry, he was about to make a new friend, one that would cast away these murky shadows of loneliness and pain. At the center of Perry's somewhat chaotic and hurtful life was Hawa Nadin, a staff at the sanctuary. The 27-year-old was an animal caregiver. Although the gorilla never realized it, she shared in his suffering. She always noticed Perry's withdrawn behavior and was burdened by the urge to help brighten his mood. Sadly, there was only so much she could do for a gorilla in quarantine. Not only that, Perry also had a dark, haunting past, a past that was marked by trauma and loss, then displacement and alienation. At a very tender age, his mother was killed by ruthless poachers who only hunted for sport. Perry, helpless at the time, could only watch as his life took a drastic turn. The poor gorilla watched through innocent eyes as his mother struggled against her killers, unaware of the gravity of his situation as she breathed her last. Perry's mother's death plunged him into a terrible fate that would last until he turned four years old. Alone and orphaned in the world, the baby gorilla was helpless when the same people took him from the forest and kept him as a pet. Perry's life, which was once characterized by warmth and carefree days, slowly transformed into a stringent and limiting system. Gone were the days when the young gorilla could hide and play under the veils of trees and shadows. Not even his mother's back, his source of relief and comfort, was there to support him. In the twinkle of an eye, Perry's life had been abruptly seized right under his primate nose. His eyes gazed on only iron bars and banana leaves that were rarely provided. Over time, Lady Luck shone her grace on him like a ray of sunshine. Perry was blessed with new owners who were not as bad as the ones who stole him from the forest. These new hands fed him properly, ensured he enjoyed his space, and limited the use of iron cages. Although it was not close to the life he had enjoyed before, Perry appreciated it. In fact, he liked it. The little changes renewed his hope for a better future, reviving the chimp spirit in ways he never imagined. Sadly, all good things, like they said, were bound to come to an end. Perry's happy days withered like leaves in the wind. Seeing how he kept getting big, his owners were at their wit's end on how to cater for him. Their pockets were not as fat as his size, and it didn't take long before they arrived at their most heartbreaking decision yet. Perry had to go. Once again, life had taught him a bitter lesson when he tried to fit in. His owners abandoned him in the most neglectful way possible. Perry faced a new life, not at a zoo, animal sanctuary, or the wild, but in a small, bushy landscape close to a village in Cameroon. There, the gorilla, barely five years old, struggled to live in the pseudo-environment that was once his home. Already softened and tamed by years of solitude and enclosure, he stuck around the outskirts of the forest, unwilling to venture deeper. Shortly after, the villagers eventually found him. It wasn't a pleasant sight, however. Perry appeared haggard, alone, and extremely famished. He was hungrily munching on mangoes from a tree. However, upon spotting the villagers, he cowered away frightened. This unexpected reaction contrasted sharply with the typical behavior of gorillas of his age and size, which usually responded by going full-on attack mode. The villagers quickly contacted wildlife authorities, thus changing the primate's life for good. Seeing how Perry was not feral, experts determined that he was unprepared for life in the wild, not on his own, especially with the high poaching rate in the area. In light of this assessment, they contacted Ape Action Africa, a non-profit foundation dedicated to protecting animals like Perry, animals who were too weak to survive in the wild or on their own. Within weeks, the foundation responded, deciding that it was best for Perry to be transported to the Mefu Primate Sanctuary. 
In early June that year, Perry arrived at the sanctuary ready for the next chapter of his life. However, nothing could have prepared him for the level of solitude he was about to face here. Although the setting was a lot friendlier compared to what he had been accustomed to, it was not entirely different for the gorilla. While the experts were positive that Perry was not ready to embrace wildlife, they were unsure whether he was mentally and physically fit to socialize with other animals. To make a proper assessment, they arrived at a somewhat unfair yet necessary arrangement for the poor primate. Perry had to live in quarantine until he was strong and healthy enough to mingle with other gorillas. So they carefully coaxed him into a quarantine area, amazed at how easily he let them shut the door behind him. The gorilla was gentle, almost looking hopeless in his given state. He only sat there, ate his meals when given, and sat peacefully and quietly, apathetic to the other noisy animals. Nadine noticed this lukewarm behavior the very first day she visited his enclosure. She saw how he sat there, watching and waiting, either for nothing to happen or for something life-changing to occur as always. After all, he had a track record of experiencing life-altering circumstances since he was a kid. Nadine never liked this somber attitude. She hated seeing him act so differently from the rest. Hated how much he didn't seem like the regular, aggressive gorilla, especially after enduring so many hardships. You poor boy, she whispered one day as she observed him, clicking her pen on her notepad. With eyes lost in thought, she gazed at the now five-year-old gorilla, wondering what could be done to help his predicament. The caregiver understood that the quarantine was a necessary step, but she also noticed that it didn't help mend Perry's socialization skills. If anything, it appeared to lessen it. The only thing that helped Perry was his softness and easygoing nature. I would be really angry if I were in your shoes, so why aren't you? She said to the gorilla, traces of concern grappling at her tone. He had been ripped from his family's arms, forced to endure human cruelty, and was now subjected to a higher form of seclusion and solitude in quarantine. His demeanor and scars told only half the story. The emotional wounds ran far deeper. So how could he remain gentle still? Why? Her mind raced with multiple ideas on how to remedy the situation. Nadine knew she was no psychologist, but she only had to put two and two together to understand that this gorilla was alone and suffering in silence. And maybe, even depressed, and the last thing she wanted was for her precious Perry to slip into such a void under her watch. Needless to say, she had a job to do. So, every morning without fail, Nadine would bring a variety of fruits to Perry. Even when she was off duty, she took the pain of visiting him the same, bringing him the regular bananas, mangoes, and nuts. The urge to brighten his mood nudged at her like a pain in her gut, and she fulfilled that desire effortlessly. Nadine monitored Perry's progress closely. She recognized the fear and mistrust in his eyes, a testament to the horrors he had faced. We'll help you heal, Perry, she whispered, hoping her gentle voice would soothe his fractured spirit. Sadly, he remained undeterred. But soon after, there was a silver lining. Days passed, and Perry slowly began to adjust to his new surroundings. Instead of being moody, he learned to trust Nadine and the sanctuary staff, gradually revealing glimpses of his true nature as a free-spirited gorilla, the one that once existed when his mother was alive. However, the road to recovery was still long and far ahead. Perry's heart remained shielded, waiting for someone to help him unlock the gates of his emotional prison. Luckily, it didn't take long for that person to appear. Deciding that Perry had made much progress compared to when they picked him up, the wildlife experts agreed that Perry was free to leave quarantine. Before the sun set that day, the gorilla happily left the lonely confines of the quarantine that had hosted him for weeks. Now, the staff led him to his new abode, which surprisingly had a special someone waiting for him. Perry walked into his new enclave, only to stop in his tracks at his surprise guest, it was no human, however, but a gorilla just like him, a young gorilla named Chris. Nadine watched as Perry stared, dumbstruck and taken aback by the unexpected encounter. For a time, the gorillas had been stationed opposite each other while Perry remained in quarantine. Judging from his stunned expression, she presumed that he must have been too out of it to realize that Chris was real, another gorilla just like him. Go ahead, Perry, she cooed, coaxing him from the enclave's entrance. Say hi to Chris. However, Perry remained rooted in place, eyes wide and mouth agape. Nadine was amazed at how similar his shocked expression mirrored humans. Letting out a little chuckle, she called out to Perry once again, urging him to welcome his new friend. 
His reaction was far from what she had expected. Snapping out of his daze, Perry shifted in a confused shuffle, aiming to head out of his enclosure in one minute and then turning back to Chris the next. It was as if he was unsure of the next move to make, unsure of what he was interacting with at that moment. Chris was much smaller in size compared to him, yet there was a kind of vitality around him that unnerved Perry. So he paced back and forth, contemplating how to handle the small gorilla. Nadine found it extremely cute and amusing. It was normal for the poor gorilla to act that way, she reasoned. After all, this would be the first time he stood face to face with one of his kind, given that the last one was his mother. After a moment of contemplation, Perry made his decision. Instead of running away like he intended, he turned to Chris and did the most unexpected thing. The gorilla suddenly grunted and walked toward the other ape, who was busy chirping in excitement. Chris's friendly disposition was all it took for Perry to lower his guard and embrace his new friend. Before Nadine could blink, the pair were already in each other's hands, playing and wrestling. It all happened so fast, too fast for Nadine to comprehend. One minute, Perry was treading carefully, and now they were acting like BFFs. Quickly, she took pictures of the sweet moment, watching Perry become a burst of energy was all she had ever dreamt of. Words could not qualify her satisfaction and relief. Perry had just made his first friend since he was little. Nadine gushed over the fact as she walked back to her station, her clipboard gingerly held to her chest. Her face glowed as she flashed her signature cheeky grin. You're in a good mood, her colleague Leocody stated matter-of-factly while sorting through some documents at her desk. Taking that as her cue to speak, Nadine went on to tell her all about the bizarre yet heartwarming sight she had recently experienced. Lokadi listened with rapt attention, and her eyes slowly twinkled as a thought crossed her mind. We should document this, she nudged, getting overly excited at the thought. Nadine raised an eyebrow, wondering what she was driving at. Leokadi expressed further, highlighting the aspects of Perry's life and journey that were awe-inspiring. She also added that a bit of exposure would be beneficial not only to the Foundation, but also to other gorillas out there. It's essential people are educated about certain hardships these animals face in the wild, she said passionately, finally eliciting a similar reaction from Nadine. Leokity was right. They owed it to young Perry to set things right. And not only him, but the other gorillas as well. The vast majority of gorillas at the sanctuary were orphans, victims of ruthless and profit-driven hunters who killed their families illegally. Nadine saw reason in Leokity's words and thus took a gamble with the altruistic plan. She knew it was a simple and foolproof way of creating awareness, and she had an even better idea. Instead of speaking through her private social media account, Nadine believed they were at a more significant advantage involving the Foundation. With that in mind, she pitched the idea to her superiors as well as the head of the Mefu Primate Sanctuary. And just like that, the idea of helping young Perry achieve a full recovery through social media became widespread. Not only did the sanctuary's management jump at the opportunity, but Ape Action Africa also came on board. Using their Facebook account, Ape Action Africa shared the pictures Nadine had taken from Perry's meeting with Chris. They cemented the incredible, tender photos with a fun backstory about the primates, adding teasing remarks about Perry's soon-to-be introduction to the two female gorillas in a nearby enclosure, Luchi and Chikaboo. The sanctuary staff did a lot of job reposting and sharing the incredible story across multiple platforms. Nadine, for one, took to the streets of her little blog. After uploading the pictures on her social media accounts, she wrote at length about her little primate buddy. In her blog, she displayed immense joy and satisfaction at how much Perry had grown. He had transformed from a lonely gorilla, defined by an enduring tragic past, to a happy creature now surrounded by warmth and affection. Nadine spoke largely about poaching activities in West Africa, drawing significant examples of their effect on Perry's life. In her note, she shunned the natives' popularized and arbitrary love for bushmeat, which was a delicacy comprising wildlife animals, including monkeys and gorillas. She stated that, although she understood how much they loved eating it, it was reaping damaging effects on nature itself. Her article called for the preservation and conservation of gorillas in this part of Cameroon. Nadine knew it was not a task that could be acted upon in a day, but was still hopeful that Perry's story would help pave the way for new reforms. As expected, the posts unleashed an unprecedented ripple effect all around. On Facebook, many people commented about the Foundation's efforts, finding solace in the fact that Perry looked happy and content with his new life. 
One commenter said, What gorgeous pictures put a smile on my face. Thank you for letting us share in these magic moments. Another shared, I just read about Perry and am so happy to hear he's settled in so well with the other gorillas and that he seems to have a new best friend in Chris. What great news! Thank you for all the wonderful work you do for these animals. The remaining comments were a flurry of support for Perry and wishes for a good life ahead with his new best friend. Visitors at the sanctuary grew considerably, with many venturing to Perry's enclosure to sneak a peek of him with his new BFF. Just like Ape Action Africa had pointed out on Facebook, the two gorillas played with each other until they collapsed from exhaustion. They hugged, wrestled, and shared their food, enjoying each other's company every day. And the excitement didn't end there. The two females, Luchi and Chickaboo, constantly watched Perry and Chris's interaction from their own enclosure. Although they didn't share in the boys' intense excitement, they watched on, looking forward to the chance of meeting Perry. I think Chickaboo might really have a crush on Perry, Nadine said to Leokity as they supervised the gorillas as usual. Leokity let out a hearty laugh as she scribbled on her clipboard. Perry is in for some fun, all right, she responded. And indeed he was. As time went on, Perry continued to be the center of attraction, both online and at the sanctuary. The young gorilla deserved it. With the heartbreak that had quantified his five years of existence, this recognition was truly long overdue. What an exciting piece! What did you think of Perry's new life? Leave an answer in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.